Welcome here to our Daywell Gymnasium on Atomic TV in tonight's presentation of the District 8 Conference Championship or District Championship with the Richland Bombers hosting the Gonzaga Prep Bullpups. I'm Max Schuster alongside Carson Gregory. Man, Carson, this game has history. First matchup uh, dating back to 1947 uh, where the Bombers took the first victory. But, th I mean, th these bom the Bombers and the Bullpups have met 17 times um, with Gonzaga Prep holding a 13 or 3 to 14 advantage. So definitely have the advantage coming into this game. The last time these two teams faced off uh, was last year in the state tournament where the Bullpups defeated the Bombers. Now, Coach Streufert uh, holds a 4-13 and record uh, all-time against the Bullpups. And the last time he defeated uh, the Bullpups in postseason play was 2009. So it's been a while um, since since Streufert's held a victory over these Bullpups. And we'll see uh, if tonight is the night. For the Bombers, uh, their key players, obviously. We're, we, you can't talk about the Bombers and their offense uh, without Josh Woodard. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. Josh Woodard really, he does a lot for the Bombers. He can shoot, he can play great defense, he can really hold up a press if you need him to. And, I mean, most of all, he, he scores 10 to 15 points a game, and that is crucial. Sometimes he can have a night, maybe go over 20, but he is, most of the time, he's electric from beyond the arc, and he can always dish and get as many assists as he needs, especially to the big man down in the post, Luke Westerfield. Yeah, and, I mean, that'll lead us right into our next guy, Westerfield. Um, I mean, he is a force to be reckoned with down low. Um, every game, you know, he, he's it's what he does with his footwork to create his own shots um, and, and what he can do with the ball and without the ball on the rebounding end and defensive side. It has been like they are like the other team is shooting over a skyscraper down low. Uh, so when they get in the paint, you got to expect Westfield to, to at least be looking for a block. Uh, nonetheless. Now, the final guy I want to talk about before we go to the bullpup side of things, Landon Northrup. Uh, Northrup's coming into the game not shooting as well as he had been at the start of the season. At one time in the season, about halfway through, um, he was shooting 52% from beyond the arc. So it's down a little bit. Um, but and last game he went, but last game he went two for three from three point line. So he's not taking as many threes. Um, but I think if if we look at the end of this game, uh, the key to tonight's game is going to be how well the Bombers shoot, starting with him uh, and Landon Northrup shooting. Uh, if he can shoot lights out, I I really think it'll be hard uh, to beat this Bomber team. Now as we look over um, on the the bullpup side of things. Big, uh, I mean, a big part of their offense, their point guard, is Henry Sandberg. Last week uh, against the Kamaikan Braves, he was able to score 18 points in their victory, 78 or 70 to 38 over the Braves up in Spokane, which got them here uh, to tonight. Um, and then another guy, I mean, you really can't. I, I, when you talk about the Bullpups, it's, it's an offensive power, and they just run a uh, well-coached team uh, and run a really good offense as well. Um, from what we've seen against, especially the Bullpups playing Kamayak in their last game, putting up 70 points, you can tell that they're definitely an offensive threat, and they can hold a good team like the Kamayak and Braves to 38 points, like you said, as well. So they are a very well-rounded team, and like you said, Henry Sandberg getting 18 points in the last game is just, you can't say the Bullpups without Henry Sandberg. He's just been playing really well lately, and well, he could show up in a game. And the other guy they run their offense through is Dylan Groves. Um, Groves... Uh, obviously a big man, but he's able to step out and shoot the ball really well. Um, so we'll see how the matchup between, I I'm guessing uh, if I'm the Bombers, I'm going to put Jack Forbes on him, who's the most elusive uh, defensive player. Big, physical, uh, can, and can jump out of the gym. So we'll see how they match up. Now, Carson, I kind of just want to break down this game um, a little bit. Uh, tonight's matchup is more than just a, a regular game. Um, this, the winner of tonight's matchup uh, gets an automatic state berth uh, into the first round, which for both these teams, they could fight for one of those top four spots, which would host uh, the first round of uh, state. If not, um, the top eight teams get an automatic first round by uh, to the Tacoma Dome. And so both these teams, based on the looks at it, they're fighting for that position uh, with a win here tonight. Now for, um, 
for the Bull Pups. Obviously coming off a huge win last week against Kamaikin. Um, and the Bombers have played two, two pretty close games against the Braves this season. Uh, definitely not, uh, couldn't, haven't dominated them like the Bull Pups did last week. And for the Bombers, they're coming off a big win uh, against the Lewis and Clark Tigers. And for, uh, in a head-to-head -head matchup, the Bull Pups actually defeated the Lewis and Clark Tigers earlier in the season by two points. Um, and, and the Bombers pull, pulled a pretty, pretty easy win um, against them on Saturday evening. So both teams coming off huge wins. Um, and, and that's what gets them here uh, to this point into the district championship and fighting for a spot in the state tournament. That'll wrap up our pregame show uh, for tonight, and we'll be back after we throw down to PA announcer Michael Valise for your introductions. Thank you. 
welcome back here to our Daywell Gymnasium and Atomic TV as I'm Max Schuster alongside Carson Gregory. Tip-off is almost underway. Now for the Bullpups, it'll be Nate Christie tipping off. And for the Bombers, it'll be Luke Westerfield. Both these teams definitely looking to come out to a hot start um, as in a game like this with energy like this. They, they need it. Should be a good one tonight. And the Bombers win the tip. It's Woodard who has the ball. Woodard kicks out. Forbes from three, no good. Westfield couldn't get a rebound. Groves will come down with it. Now it's the Bull Pups. Jackson to Christie. Jack Forbes almost got a hand on it. Inside, ball is on the ground and out of bounds. It'll be going the other way. Bomber ball. Woodard will bring the ball up and set this up, the offense up. Out on the three line, Hornovet coming off a big game shooting. Get over to Northrop. That kicks out, and it's Forbes. And they'll bring it out with under 10 on the shot clock. Woodard drives down low to Forbes. Forbes gets it up, and we'll get the first two points of tonight. Really good ball movement. I think everybody on that team just touched the ball in that possession. Now it's Jackson over to Christie. Woodard got a hand on it. And they'll say it wasn't over and back. From three, no good. Woodard pulls up with a hand in his face. Couldn't connect from three. Sandberg goes the other way. Inside, rattles around and finally dropped for Sandberg. Westfield with the ball on the outside. He'll keep swinging around. Had Westfield inside but didn't like it. Now it's Northrop. He'll create his own shot. Westfield able to tip it to Forbes and they'll keep the possession alive. Really nice defense so far from the Bull Pups. They're getting up on their man, playing tight man defense. Now it's Forbes. Forbes drives wide open, left hand to lay in. Forbes is all four points for the Bombers early. To the corner, it's Christie. Christie, Westfield on him. He's trapped down low. Now it's Jackson. Sandberg with Forbes guarding him. He drives, no good off the glass. Northrop comes down with the rebound. Woodard will push the floor. Inside of Westerfield. Westerfield fouled on his way up. Couldn't convert for the and one call. Westerfield was fouled by Dylan Groves down low. It's his first personal foul, team's first foul. First one's good by Westerfield. Second one, no good. Northrop got a hand on it. We'll throw it right between the legs of Christie. Sandberg able to keep his footing, but the Bombers fans calling for travel. The refs didn't see it. Powell that time will take too many steps and it will be a travel going the other way. Now Woodard gets it over to Northrop. They'll keep it on the outside. From the corner, it's Hornivet. Horner, Hornivet, no good. Woodard able to get the rebound. And Northrop couldn't connect either. Powell will come down with the rebound for the Bull Pups. Now it's Sandberg to Groves. Groves in the corner. That's money, nothing but net. 
That was a good pass by Sandberg to set that up down to Groves over in the corner. And we said it earlier, or said it earlier, Groves. I mean, he can shoot, and uh, he, he's lethal from beyond the arc. And Bombers will need to protect that. Can't leave him open anymore. Now Forbes, he goes opposite of screen. He'll drive, kick to the corner. Hornet drives off the glass, no good. They'll keep the possession alive, and Forbes from deep jumper. Jackson will come down to three bound. Groves again from three, no good. Good aggressive rebounds from both teams. Groves playing really good defense inside on Westerfield. That's a hard thing to do. It's not, not an easy task to guard 6'10 forward down in the post. Now Forbes kicks out to Woodard. Woodard, quick shot, quick release, and that's a money ball. Good from beyond the arc. Assist by Jack Forbes. Inside the Groves. He'll kick it out. Jackson barely saved that from going out of bounds. Now it's Sandberg. Driving baseline. It's Groves with under 10 on the shot clock. Down low to Christie and couldn't hold on to it. Bomber ball. You can tell when both teams have a good defense when the shot clock goes below five seconds quite a few times this early on in the first quarter. Now it's Northrop. Back to Hornivet. Down low, Westerfield has it. Oh, and a big slam, a jam, a loop, Westerfield. Huge momentum shifter for the Bombers. Now it's Groves, guarded by Hornivet, and they'll get to Sandberg. To the corner, Jackson, pump fake, got him to go, and a really good ball move uh, to create that open shot. Now Forbes around the key, floater, or jumper, that's good. Man, Jack, Jack Forbes from the elbow, elbow. <laughs> that's a combo you don't want to see if you're on the other end. Looked like he was flowing through the air to that athleticism that he has. Over to Christie. Christie from three, that's good! With the hand in his face. Nate Christie able to get it to go. Howley will get a hand on it that time. He'll get a piece of the arm and it'll be a foul. They call a foul on Howell. That's his first personal foul, team second foul. Silent, silent Kiesel Kahane will check in for the Bombers. And for the Bullpups, it'll be Keegan Savage. And Bombers are going to utilize that time when Chrissy's out for the Bullpups to give Westerfield uh, a break. Inside ball got tipped. Stolen by the Bullpups. And it'll be Sandberg to bring the ball up. Down low. Grows off the rim. No good. Now Woodard has a three on two. He'll take it to the rim. Across the key. Silent key. So Calhane got it to go. Oh, swing it around. Get in the hands of Sandberg. Down low, it's Savage. It'll be a foul called. And I'll say he got a piece of his arm. They call a foul on Kiesel Kalhane. It's his first personal foul, first team foul. Hudson Floyd in for the Bullpups and Chris Daniels for the Bombers. Sandberg will get it into Groves. Sandberg drives, step back, money move, and an even better shot. Nothing but net. Great footwork, taking him in, then spinning back around for a little elbow jumper. 
It's a two-point game here. With about two seconds separating shot and game clock. Offensive foul called down low on Landon Northrup. That'll give the Bull Pups one last shot here in the first quarter, trailing by two. That was Landon Northrup's first personal foul, team second foul of the quarter. Samberg guarded by Forbes. Under 10 on the clock. Now Powell to Groves. Groves from three, no good. Chrissy will come down with the rebound. No, it's Kiesel Kahane. And now time expires before Northrop can get it off. And after one quarter play, the Bombers lead 14 to 12 over the Gonzaga Prep Bullpups. Bombers have a two-point advantage to start this quarter, and it'll be the Bull Pups with the ball. Sandberg over to Groves. Ball is tipped, and the Bombers will get come down to the rebound. Now it's Forbes spinning around. He'll go up, throw it up. And not really the shot you're looking for. And Lance Hornovet tried for the rebound, but I believe they will call him for a foul. That's Lance Hornovet's first, first personal foul, first team foul of the quarter. Sandberg over to Savage. Now it'll be Powell. Down across the key, blocked by Forbes. And they'll push the floor. Now it's Northrop driving baseline. He'll get fouled by Sandberg. It's going to be a foul on Henry Sandberg. That's his first personal foul, team's first foul. Woodard will inbound it to Westerfield. It's a powerful pass over to Forbes, able to hold on. Forbes driving, jellied around the defender. And create his own opportunity. Good defense by Landon Northrop. Groves from three, no good. Bombers with three on two. Down low, it's Hornovet. Northrop driving. Ball got tipped into Westerfield's hands, and he'll get the jumper to go. I don't think that was the look that they were going for, but. They came out and worked out. They got two points from Westerfield. Inside Groves. Blocked by Hornovet. And down low to Forbes. Forbes Damn. will bring it home. Timeout called by the Bullpups. 30-second timeout with six minutes, 23 seconds left. Trailing by eight.
Welcome back here with six minutes, 23 seconds left here in this second quarter in this first half. Um, the Bombers lead by eight. We, and before the game, we talked about three players scoring-wise for the Bombers, who we didn't talk about with Jack Forbes, and he has 10 points, half the points for the Bombers here uh, over halfway through this first half. Christy over to Sandberg. Inside Powell. He'll go up and under. Westerfield couldn't get to go. And now the ball will be on the ground. Powell. Fans calling for a travel. He moved with it on the ground. Now Sandberg out to Groves. Now it's Powell. That's at least a jump ball. Hey, don't act like you're new. Shot no good from down low. From three, no good, and Westerfield will come down with the rebound. A lot of offensive rebounds for the Bullpups on that possession. Couldn't get the shots to fall, but they could get the rebounds. Now, Woodard tried to go down low, ball got tipped, and couldn't get the steal back. Now Sandberg, he'll pull up from three. Good, nothing but net. Henry Sandberg. Palmer still scoreless after the timeout. Woodard with a hand in his face, no good. Westerfield couldn't come down with the rebound. It'll be on the ground, it'll be a jump ball called. Possession arrow for the Bombers. Like we talked about earlier, both, or not, the, not both these teams, the Bullpups are a very, very offensively heavy team, and we've seen that with almost every guy shooting a shot from beyond the arc today. Westfield to Hornivet. They'll keep it on the three line. Forbes baseline jumper, that's good. Sandberg guarded by Forbes. Inside, they'll kick it out. Powell driving to the corner. Jackson from three, no good. Northrup, he'll fire from three, and that's off left. Northrup still scoreless, and the Bombers will take a timeout. That was a deep three-point attempt from Landon Northrup. It'll be a full timeout here, almost halfway through this second quarter. Bombers lead by seven. Forbes with 12 points. Um, none of those coming from beyond the arc, but he also has four rebounds. And for Westerfield down low, five points and four rebounds. For the Bullpups, Henry Sandberg uh, with seven points and one for one from three-point land. So we'll see what continues here uh, into the second, or in the second half of this second quarter as the Bullpups start with the ball. Inside, it's Groves. He'll go over Hornivet. No good. Brought in by Woodard. Good footwork by Groves. Just couldn't get it to fall. Now the Bombers set their offense up. Kiso Kahane in as the big down low. Woodard jumper. That's good. He's been firing really quick shots all day. A delay of game warning on White. Oh 
Yeah, Coach Troyford yelling at his guys, you cannot do that. And, uh, I mean, you cannot have a mistake like that happen in this game. Now, Northrop got a hand on it, tipped it off of Powell. It'll be bomber ball. Hey, here we go. Fire it up. Uh, Woodard will drive left, kick to the corner. It's Hornovet. He'll pump fake and kick back out. Woodard drives, laying no good, but he'll get his own rebound and can't get the putback. Very creative shots from uh, Woodard there. Sandberg got the floater, and the, the bull pups are moving quick. Sandberg's been showing, it, showing us his fancy footwork as he takes it down. Northrop off from beyond the arc, and they'll say it's out of bounds. Bull pup ball. Westerfield back in for Keith Kalane. And Floyd in for the Bull Pups. Christy will kick it back out to Sandberg. Christy guarded by Westfield. Under 10 on the shot clock. He'll spin around. Damn, well, looking like looking like the old days with a little hook shot there over Westerfield. Bombers lead by five. Nothing wrong with old school. Woodard from three, no good. Sandberg. He'll swing it around. It's Powell with two minutes on the clock remaining in the quarter. He'll drive. <laughs> Fade away. Man, <laughs> Henry Sandberg cannot miss right now. He is playing phenomenal ball. Up to 11 points. Manley has been really deadly from the free throw line. Lots of different floaters and other type of creative shots from there. Woodard will drive. Left hand lay in. That drops. Inside Powell, off the glass, that's good. Westerfield tried to block it. Didn't quite get there in time. Now it's Woodard. He'll drive another lane. Good off the glass again. That's Josh Woodard's ninth point of the night. And player with some blood on him, so he'll have to sub out. That's Hornet. They're getting a quick little jersey swap. Now oh, it's Floyd. Inside Powell. They'll kick it out. Christie from three. No good. Daniels will come down with the rebound. Pass intercepted by Groves, and it'll go the other way. Floyd blocked by Daniels. You can see he was very happy with that block. A little celebration right after it. Inside Powell, wide open laying off the inbound. Back to a three-point game. Woodard drives again. Man, he, he's having some really good takes, and he just keeps going. He cannot miss those laps. Sandberg looking for one last shot before the half. Ten seconds on the clock. Stolen by Northrop. And they'll say he was out of bounds. I, I don't know if they, you can get another look at that. Uh, it definitely got grabbed, which forced him out of bounds. 
We'll see okay. as Powell got the last shot off, and that's good from beyond the arc. And the Bombers head into halftime with a two-point lead, 30-28 to 28 over the Bullpups.
come back. Welcome back here to Atomic TV and Art Daywall Gymnasium uh, as we'll bring you back for the second half of play. Uh, now we'll go over some first half stats uh, as we bring you back for the Bombers leading scorer, Jack Forbes with 12 points. Uh, no, none of those points coming from beyond the arc and followed by 11 points from Woodard and only three of those out of his four attempts were able to fall. Now for the Bullpups, 11 points for Henry Sandberg. Uh, I mean, he, he was hot there uh, at the end of that second quarter. Uh, and I, I bet you we can see, we see that continue uh, into tonight's match or into the second half uh, as well. And then seven points for Brogdon Howell. Um, and for Brogdon Howell. So we'll see what happens. Um, and she had one three right there at the end of the first half. So both these teams, uh, it'll come down to the three points, the rebounds, and the turnovers. And currently, the Bombers lead the rebound category uh, by seven, leading 19 to 12 in the turnover category. They lead, they lead, or they trail. They have six turnovers, and the Bullpups have four. So I bet, I bet you, uh, we'll see those two categories stay close, and this game will just it will stay close as well. We'll see what happens here as the second half of play is moments away. The Bullpups will start with the ball. And Sandberg will bring it up and set the offense up. It's Christie. Christie stolen by Northrup. Now they'll go the other way. Inside ball is tipped. And right back in the hands of Northrup. It'll be Bomber ball. Now it's Jackson, over to Sandberg. Sandberg from three, no good. Brought in by Westerfield. It's Northrop, over to Hornibet. Woodard pulls up with a hand in his face. That's money from beyond the arc. Woodard has been so hot tonight. He's been making all his layups, great takes, great quick three points. Yeah, he's now two for five from beyond the arc. Powell over to Christy. Christy, he'll drive, kick to the corner inside. The mismatch down the block by Forbes, but they'll call a foul on his way up. That's going to be Jack Forbes' first personal foul, team's first. Christie at the line, shooting two. First one good by Christie. Little off night strike. Second one good as well. Five point game, the Bombers lead. Now Woodard will bring the ball up and set the offense up. Over to Hornet. Wasn't looking, turned back around at the right time. Now Woodard with under 10 on the shot clock. He'll drive right, goes around the defender. No good. Inside. Great move by Ryan Jackson. He was being double teamed, but he did get a or he was able to phase out of that and get two points. Inside, Forbes, Forbes floater, no good. Good footwork, just a little bit long in the shot. Jackson again, now he'll kick it out. Ball is tipped by Forbes. They'll fight for it on the ground, out of bounds. They'll say it's bullpup ball. That's right, Jack, let him know. Sandberg. 
He'll get a screen. Kick out to Christie. In the corner, Jackson wide open. And he got it to go. Tie ball game here. Two minutes, 30 seconds into this second half. That was a great pass from Christie to open up that three-point attempt. Now Forbes will set a, re or a screen for Woodard. Woodard will drive, left-hand lay-in, another missed lay-in by Woodard. Sandberg in the corner. Now it's Christie, jumper, no good. Inside Northrop. Northrop down low, he'll go up, fouled hard, and he's going to the line, trying for two. It's gonna be a foul on number 20, Henry Sandberg. It's the second personal foul, team's first foul of the quarter. Thank you, Henry. These free throws are a really crucial part of the game. Because a game this close really can come down to how many free throws are made or missed. And he misses the first. Hey, Landon, let's change it right here. Come on, Landon. Second one got or able to go. Now it's Sandberg. He'll pull up, floater or jumper. First lead of the game for the Bull Pups. You gotta play defense, floater. Now it's Forbes. Forbes, jumper left short. Sandberg. Drives. And it'll be a blocking foul. They'll call it on Woodard. That's, that's Woodard's first personal foul. Team's second foul. At least you're consistent. Come on, strike. Don't act like you're new. That's awful. You can hear the Bomber fans in the background. Sandberg makes the first, grows their lead to two. Up to 14 points for Sandberg. Second one good as well. Three point game. Inside Westerfield goes up on his head. Luke Westerfield, big slamma jamma. Hey, let's get big. Let's see more of that. An offensive foul called on Groves as he gave him a little excess push on the screen. It's going to be Groves' second personal foul, team's second foul. Hey, let's get big, Luke. <laughs> Calling the foul on 32, that's Groves. Inside Westerfield again, over the top, no good. Groves from three, hand in his face, money! Forbes had Westerfield cutting. Westerfield able to keep it alive, but tips it right to Sandberg. To the corner, Jackson again. Jackson, good from three, and the bull pups are hot. They grow their lead to seven. They are just electric. You can just feel the momentum shift. Now Northrop. Over to Hornivet. Hornivet from three, no good. The Bombers just can't get a shot to fall. Forbes punched it in there, and they'll say he body checked him a little bit. Jimmy Jack Forbes' second personal foul, team's third foul. Timeout called by the Bombers here with two minutes, 49 seconds left in this third quarter.
The Bullpups on a 10 to 2 run, or 10 to 3 run. Uh, here, they were tied just a moment ago, and now they have a seven point lead. Sandberg to Christie. Groves over to Powell. Now Powell drives, he goes up over the top, no good. The Bombers finally catch a break on a bullpup miss. Now it's Woodard. He'll spin around, fouled on his lane, on the lane. They call a foul on number five, Brogan Howell. It's his second personal foul, team's third foul. If you want to win a game like this, you really got to play good defense. Keep it hard for the other team to score. Now it's Woodard. Hand in his face. Good from three. That's his 17th point of the night. It'll be a foul called on Landon Northrup. Off ball foul. Refs didn't call much in the first half. Here in the second half, they're calling a lot more. That was Landon Northrup's second personal foul, team's fourth foul. Yeah, they, you cannot foul another time if you're the Bombers here in this quarter. You got to play very disciplined. Sandberg will get called for a five second violation. Woodard again from three, no good. Groves tried to get the rebound and got it into the hands of Jackson. Now it'll be Sandberg who brings the ball up. Over to Jackson, he'll drive baseline. Groves up, and he'll say it was a block out of bounds off the Bombers. Really nice block from Lance Hornbeck. Westerfield back in the game for the Bombers. They'll get it into Christie. Now Christie, really good ball fake. And that'll be a foul, hard foul called on the Bullpups. It's foul on Broken Howell. It's his third personal foul, team's fourth foul. Now both teams with four fouls, kind of getting near double bonus trouble with a minute 20, 25 left. Both teams now have to be really disciplined with their defense. Ball's tipped. It's over to Woodard. Now Woodard again from three. That time no good. And a foul called on the Bombers. That'll be their 15th foul. They'll be going to the line for double bonus. Foul on Lance Warnovitz, the second personal foul, team's fifth. Hey, they got help tonight. First one's good by Christy. Seven point game. Well, the difference is they were shooting percentage is higher than ours. Yeah. 
second good as well. Driving its what or Northrop down low to Forbes. Forbes able to get the lane. Nice little Euro from Lynn Northrop to set up and give it off to his teammate Jack Forbes. Over to Floyd. Now Groves blocked by Westerfield into the hands of Northrop. Northrop will drive. Floater, that's good. And the Bombers, or the Bullpups will look for one last shot. Under 10 on the clock, it's Sandberg. Now it's Christie. Cup on the clock, got it to go. That'll be the last, sh last shot of the half. After three quarters of play, 51-45, the Bullpups lead here in Art Daywell Gymnasium. here as there's one quarter left for both these teams to punch their ticket to the state tournament and the other will be facing or will be playing on Saturday facing the winner through the losers bracket I'll be horn of it guarded by Christy foul called on Christy That's Christie's first personal foul, team's first foul. We'll get into Westerfield. Forbes to Woodard. And they'll see if they can get something going on offense they haven't had a look yet. Got him to go by. And now it's Woodard, deep two, that's good. Hey, big old deep, Bombers. Howell, inside Groves, Groves, wide open lane, a great find by Howell to create that shot. The Bullpups have really good chemistry and we've been seeing it all night with their assists. Skip pass, ball is tipped by Christie. Now Christie has Howell down low, back to Christie. Woodard able to slow the fast break down and let his teammates get back and force out of bounds. Now the Bombers cannot make mistakes like that anymore. In to Groves. Christie down low, off the glass. Mid-range jumper, that's good. Now Woodard, over to Hornivet. Woodard tried to skip it across the key, ball got tipped on the attempt. Bullpups lead by eight. Still over six minutes to play. Christie wide open from three, no good. Northrop will come down with the rebound. Hit it. 
From three, Hornibet, that's good. Nothing by net. There's his first, per first points of the night, being three points off that three-pointer. If you get him hot, he will not miss. That's over to Sandberg. Groves from three, Groves good, and he answers back. The Bullpups have set a lot of really good screens, Let, opening up a lot of drives, a lot of three-point shots. To the corner, it's Woodard. Foul will be called on Howell. That's his fourth personal foul. Team second. Floyd in the game for the Bullpups. We've had some big guys with nobody who can draft this the last few years. Now it's Northrop. Hornervet down low. Hornervet couldn't get it to go and put back no good as well. Woodard's there in the right place at the right time and after rolling around the rim, able to drop. 21st point of the night for Woodard. Over to Groves. Sandberg, fadeaway, jumper, in and out, no good. First one we've seen him miss like that tonight. Woodard drives, kicks out Hornovet from three. Good! Back to a three-point game, and the crowd is fired up. Like I said before, you get horned it hot, he will not miss from beyond the arc. And it's a timeout call to try and slow down the momentum the Bombers have got back. Full timeout with four minutes, 15 seconds left in the District 8 championship game. Welcome back here with four, just over halfway left in this fourth quarter. The Bull Pups lead by three. Now it's Sandberg. Christie, pass to Sandberg, barely kept in bounds. Wide open the corner, it's Floyd. He'll drive. They'll swing it around and wide open. Groves cannot connect, and that is a big miss by Dylan Groves. Great ball movement left him wide open, and a couple guys just jumping the ball, trying uh, to get that steal. Had a few open looks for the Bullpups on that possession. Really good misdirection. Horn of it to Northrup. Inside, Kiesel Calhane couldn't get the lay in to go. Woodard there for the rebound, and they'll keep it alive, but it's on the ground. It'll be a jump ball call. Possession arrow for the Bullpups. 
Keisla Kalani had an open lane and just couldn't get it to go. And Westerfield will check back in. He, even lay, he missed that layup. He came back, hustled, and got the jump ball. Oh, a really good look. Um, and yeah, the Bombers tried to keep it alive. Just ball was on the ground. They had an opportunity, uh, but just couldn't hold on. Now it's Groves to Jackson. Inside Christie. They keep it out on the arc. Jackson with four on the clock. He'll kick it out. Howell, Howell from three. Off the glass. That's good. The bank is open here on Tuesday night. That's two at the buzzer shots Howell's had. Inside, Westerfield, Westerfield able to get it off the glass. The, the Bullpups have been on fire from beyond the arc tonight. Now it's over to Jackson. Off yeah. ball, foul, offensive called on be Howell. The fifth foul for Brogan Howell. He is out of the game. That's big uh, for the Bullpups, having him check out with five fouls. Now Woodard inside to Westerfield. Down low, lay in, that's good. Two, back to a two-point game. Just over two minutes to play. The Bombers trail. Christie gets it off. No, and he'll keep it. Sandberg guarded by Forbes. Under 10 on the clock, on the shot clock. Ball's tipped to the corner. Jackson, Jackson from three, no good. And Forbes will come down with the rebound. Ball stolen back, and Woodard able to keep it alive. That was a really close Down ball. low to Forbes. Forbes oh. let Aliou play in. That's good. Tie game. Now we have a. Now we have a tie game. Minute 31. Tie. The Bull Pups will call full timeout as Art Daywald is rocking by the Bomber fans. Welcome back here with the tie ball game. A minute and 31 seconds in the District 8 championship game here in Art Daywall Gymnasium. Oh, no, you're good. Just to set the stage a little, Bull Pups with three fouls, Bombers with zero. Timeouts left. Bombers have three, Bull Pups have two. Christie to Floyd. Now Floyd will drive. From three, Sandberg and money. Nothing but net. 18 points for Sandberg. He's been a force to reckon with tonight. Ball is tipped, but Woodard will keep it alive. 
Now Woodard will drive. He goes up off the glass. No good. Not a shot you want to take here with just a minute left to play. And Bombers, they have zero fouls, so they can't afford uh, to foul and send them to the line. They'll need a lockdown defense. And they will call foul. Third personal foul for Jack Forbes. Only the first team foul. And the reason that's such a huge is because it resets the shot clock. Uh, and you cannot have that happen here in a close game. Three-point game. We'll stay here, Carson. Um, now, as this winds down, the Bullpups, they're going to try and just look to waste time. And the Bombers cannot foul to reset the shot clock. But on offense, they don't necessarily need a, they don't need a three if they get the ball um, quick. And they can't force shots uh, late in the game. And, and Woodard kind of right there. You can't force that, that lay-in that has a low probability um, and, and just kind of move the ball around, find the open shot, and, and get get a good look and get it to fall. I think the winner goes number one out of here with straight ball, right? And then we'll play again for Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to win, though. That's what I'm talking about. That was one of the real goals. Oh, yeah. Christy will be inbounding for the Bull Pups. He'll look to get it in and gets it into Jackson. Bombers playing hard defense, trying not to foul. And they will call a foul. I don't like the shot. I don't like putting the shot clock up. I don't like that. We don't want to shoot foul. We don't want to shoot. They're trying to, I think, force a, a intercepted pass more than anything. That was an that was an intention. We'll get it into Sandberg. Bullpups are really good at passing. And the Bombers are trying to get up to that fifth foul. We'll see what happens as they keep resetting the shot clock. They're trying to force, and they call a timeout. It will force some uh, havoc going on. Like we'll send this one a break with 37 seconds left. We're trying to put him on the foul line. Welcome back, and now as it's winding down, it's not the time, but Coach Troyford would like to give a shout-out to Shep and Lisa Sasser uh, from Coach Little Neighborhood watching Wall of Walls. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Now, the Bullpups will get it in in an intentional foul, or a quick foul, uh, which is good. You want it to be quick. Only one second uh, was able to get off the clock. Christie gets it into Jackson. They're looking for a double team, and they do get a foul called with 30 seconds exactly on the clock. So no shot clock. If you're going to foul, you're looking for a quicker foul than that. That was the fourth foul for Josh Woodard. And Woodard can't afford a foul again. He's a huge part of the team. First one good by Groves. Second one good as well. Timeout will be called. No, five se or 30 seconds left, five point deficit for the Bombers. We'll see what Coach Schroefert uh, draws up in the timeout. I, I mean, obviously, at this point, I'd expect them just to get down and score, whether it's a, it's a two or three, it doesn't matter. Uh, just some score, sort of basket uh, to keep them in it, and then 
I don't know if you foul or try and obviously try and force the turnover first. Uh, we'll see what happens here with 30 seconds left. It's a really tough position to be in for the Bombers. Down five points here. 30 seconds to go. Really got to be mindful with the shots you're taking and really got to play good, hard defense. Cannot afford to lose any time. Now Woodard will drive. Step back three. No good. He gets his own rebound, but he'll tip off the backboard in the hands of Westfield while he was standing out of bounds. Kiso Kahane will sub in probably for the defensive possession, just a little bit quicker. Bombers trying not to foul, but more to get a steal, and Woodard will foul and get his fifth foul. Uh, and check out the game. You don't want to put him on the foul line. Jackson at the line, 2 2. Daniels in the game, who are. Jackson misses the first. These are big free throws to miss. Second one falls. Six point game, the Bombers need a three and probably from that man, Landon Northrop. And he will throw one up and that's good. It'll be a timeout called by the Bombers. Hope's still there as it's back to a three point game. Northrop, Northrop uh, hasn't really been able to shoot tonight. Made a really uh, clutch one there. Yeah, and he, that's his first three of the night. Probably the most difficult one to make, too. Put 10.2 seconds back on the clock. Give them an extra second, and I mean every second matters here in this game. Got to stop the bullpups here and make a quick free to send it to overtime. Yeah, we'll see what Coach Troyfer uh, is drawing up in the huddle. And we'll see if the Bombers try and foul or try and get a steal. I mean, they're going to try and force anything they can uh, right here. Christy trying to get something in, and they're going to. And it's a timeout called by the Bombers or by the Bullpups. And they call. They have one timeout left. <laughs> well, I never called a timeout. You said. And we'll see the timeout down in. Uh, I don't know. I believe Sandberg called the timeout. Full timeout. Three point game. Bombers have one last hope. And we'll see if that's to foul or to try and get a steal. I, I don't know, Carson. This is a tough situation for the Bombers. Um, they do put one second back on the clock. Kind of a hard... Well, Some hard choices to make on defense. Really. Another thing, too, is if you get the ball, you got to get it to Northrop. And he hasn't had the best of night shooting. Uh, and, and Woodard's out of the game. 
with five fouls. It was always one of the two. He's been, he made the last two. We'll see as Christie's inbounding for the Bull Pups. And they'll get it into Sandberg, almost stolen by Forbes. It'll be a foul called with 4.7 seconds left. Man, Forbes was flying and almost got a hand on it. Not able to, and Sandberg will be going to the line. Henry Sandberg, two for two on free throws so far tonight. Sandberg makes the first. Second one good as well, and that will probably be the wrap for tonight. And we'll see as Northrop gets one last shot. He can't get the three, and the Bombers fall to the Gonzaga Prep Bull Pups, and the Bull Pups will be District 8 champs Defeating the Bombers 69 to 64 here in Art Daywell Gymnasium on Tuesday night. Now, before we wrap things up, we'll go over some final stats uh, of the night. We'll start with the Bull Pups leading scorer, Henry Sandberg, the man who did it all on offense, uh, who got them into this position. 20 points. Five rebounds, five assists. And a, followed by Ryan Jackson, with, or, or sorry, Dylan Groves with 13 points. Nine of those points coming from beyond the arc, as well as Ryan Jackson with 11 with two huge three-pointers uh, to keep them in the game. Now we'll head over to the Bomber side. Jack or Josh Woodard led all scoring with 21 points. Nine, point, nine from beyond the arc, seven rebounds as well as Jack Forbes with 16 points, five rebounds, and two assists. Now, Carson, if you look at those two categories that we talked about, the turnover category, or rebound category, 28 for the Bombers, 25 for the Bullpups, but that turnover category, nine for the Bombers, and eight for the Bullpups. So when it comes down to it, uh, those are the statistics that that will break it down and, and change the game even by one possession, and that's where that turnover comes in uh, to key. Um, if we look at, like I mentioned earlier, we look at the free throws, those are very clutch. I mean, in the end of the game, the Bull Pups shot 12, 12 free throws total, and they made 11, only missing one free throw. And that's really what it kind of comes down to. The Bombers didn't get very many free throw attempts, but they did get four, and they made two of those four. Not that that makes much of a difference with a five-point difference between the two scores. If we look at um, if we look at the turnover category, the Bombers do have one more than the Bull Pups, and other than that, most of the stats have been pretty even. So, as you could hear, PA announcer Michael Lee's announcing uh, opponent in time still to be announced for the Bombers uh, on Saturday. They will host a loser out, winner go to state game. Uh, and that will be played here in Art Daywell Gymnasium. So that will be it for us here on Atomic TV. Uh, thank you guys for joining us here tonight. Um, and the Bull Pups are the District 8 champs over the Richland Bombers 69-64 in tonight's matchup. Thank you guys. And as always, go Bomber.